get fired. Is this it? It is recording. We're, We're going. going. Okay. I'm going to... Yeah. I will sync those claps with the camera. And then... Oh, that's going to fuck it up. Just give you a standing ovation. <laughs> Why not? Well, dude, You're just I'm, trying uh, to help. I'm pumped that you're here. Me too. This is really exciting. Uh, In which place are you pumped? <laughs> I can't. You cannot I can't, disclose. I can't disclose that. Yeah, we'd have to get married. <laughs> Polygamy is against the law, therefore you cannot disclose. It's against the law? Mm-hmm. Oh, damn. I yeah. thought in Utah. No. People get around it by continuing to be criminals despite the law. But. No. Sometimes you got to do that. Sometimes it's better to ask forgiveness than permission. Yeah, I guess, uh, I don't know, being a polygamist now has to be, like, really exciting. Mm -hmm. Because it's like being a gay dude in the 1950s. Yeah. Like, it's outlawed, you know. But you couldn't find, like, one of your wives on the Senate floor and go away to the bathroom. (laughs) That's a difference. It's not hot in that way where you can meet a stranger who happens to be one of your wives. Yeah, you're not going to find, like... Uh, you're not going to find a polygamous wife at a truck stop. <laughs> <laughs> like, are you married to me? Brigham Young maybe could. He had too many wives to count, but Mark Twain did the best jokes about that in his book, Roughing It. I'm not going to add any more. Really? He, yeah. Wait, he did jokes on Brigham Young? Really? Yeah, like a lot of them. Did he, about, his, even, about him numbering his wives and saying, oh, what number are you? What's your number? <laughs> I didn't even know people knew who Mormons were back then. Yeah, Mark Twain did. Yeah. Um, he met Brigham Young a few times, and Brigham Young like tussled his hair, even though he wasn't that much younger than Brigham Young. <laughs> <laughs> That's really and it pissed cool. him off a lot, so he wrote about him and roughing it. And he said uh, he was pretending to be Brigham Young in, in the book, and he said um, a woman came up to me and said she was one of my wives, but she didn't even know her number. <laughs> Like, I get wife one a brooch, now I have to get wife two a brooch, and wife three a brooch. <laughs> Lots of great jokes. Man. Well, also, I'll center the mic more this way, so mm. we kind of see the camera, because then it just gets your side profile the whole time. Oh, yes. And, I mean, not that it's bad, but my side profile is pretty gnarly. <laughs> Mine's weird. I think I just look like a villain from the side. Yeah, I don't, I wouldn't look good on a coin. I wouldn't be... <laughs> I'd be a. It would be a rough day if I was a founding father. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. If you were a Caesar. Yeah, they wouldn't use it. They would. <laughs> they would not use. They'd it. use your predecessor, <laughs> just like a butt double. <laughs> just use a double. Somebody who looks vaguely like you, but um, photogenic for coins. <laughs> what do they yeah. call coin uh, collecting? There's no name for it. Um, is there? Yeah. I didn't know numatology i think my brother's into coin collecting okay yeah he has a i don't know if he has any more since he hit puberty but he uh when he was younger he was very into coin collecting uh now he's like into other things you know fun fact uh my youngest brother uh has autism does he yeah and that's how he manifests but it he doesn't have uh he doesn't have any like special skills like he doesn't have any superpowers he just has, like, punching holes in the wall. Like, he has that one. Okay. <laughs> He'll, Num- like, throw a fit, punch a hole in a wall, but, like, he doesn't, like, he's not good at math or anything. Yes. Um, numismatics is this coin, is what numismatics. coin is called. So, yeah. I need to get into that. I want to... So, if you were numismagenic, you would look good on a coin. <laughs> Newsmagenic. Num- numismagenic. Yeah. I'm just going to cover this like, guy while we talk. It looks vaguely sexual. Does it? Yeah. Why? Um, I don't know. I guess that monkey also is, uh, it's, uh, yeah. I mean, I guess it's not really bestiality if it's also a primate, right? And not a, and, uh, inanimate. But... It is inanimate, so. Yeah. Then it's just doing a weird totally thing. Totally legal. Yeah. <laughs> no laws. It would be totally legal for me to fuck this. <laughs> if you gave it to me. I don't think I could fuck somebody else's property. I think that would be wrong. That would be illegal. Yeah. Maybe. I don't Defacement know. Defacement of another's property. Can you imagine property. the police report on that? <laughs> Did he deface his property? Yeah, he came in its face. He came in his property's face. So I would say he defaced it. He came the face off the monkey. <laughs> okay. Oh, man. Anyway. Well, dude, yeah, I'm pumped to have you here. Uh, Still I mean, pumped. I'm pumped. 
<laughs> you never forgot about being pumped. That's how pumped. <laughs> no, never, never forgot. Uh, it's, I will say you and one other person I've met in my time in comedy. Mm-hmm. Um, there's two people I've met in comedy where I see you on stage and I'm like, ah, I could never do that. Oh, thank you. Like it's, uh, you have like, it's, I don't know if the word is like atypical, but it's a comedic genius thing. (laughs) Like, Like I, it's a different way of thinking then most open micers go at it. Oh, yeah. Because oh, a lot of open micers go at it the v- very similarly, uh-huh. uh, the same format of failing. Um, and then you go out to an open mic, and it's like there's no one doing anything close to what you're doing on stage. Thanks, man. I just like writing jokes. Yeah. I like writing them and telling them. What? Yeah. Uh, what got you into stand-up? How long have you been doing it now? Um, I never really watched stand-up before I did it. So oh, really? I don't actually know why I started doing it. But jokes would occur to me. So I guess that's the reason I started to do it. I was like, maybe I should tell them. <laughs> when I was a kid, I wanted to be a comedian because I watched blue-collar comedy. And then I got old enough that I... can't I... imagine you liking blue-collar comedy. I did. I really I really liked it. Um, I still like Ron White a lot. Yeah. Uh but I got old enough to um, that uh, I didn't remember what they said at all. And uh, I just had, like, jokes occur to me. I didn't really know any jokes. I just thought of some jokes. Some of the jokes I thought of I still use. Like, uh, I'm obsessive compulsive. If I see someone with one eye, I have to poke out the other. <laughs> That's the oldest joke I wrote. That's my oldest joke. It's from okay. years and years and years and years before I did comedy. But... Um, I just thought it's a shame to have all these jokes written down and not to use them. So I did comedy and then I started watching comedy and then I did comedy better after that. <laughs> so, so who do you like to watch now? Um, famous people or local people? Either or. Elena Hershey is probably my favorite local comedian right now. Really? Mm-hmm. I, I could see how you guys kind of have similar... I don't know that we're similar. Um, she's pretty subtle, and I'm not yeah. subtle. <laughs> not <laughs> subtle at all. I guess it's yeah. kind of, you guys both kind of take like a monotone approach to your... Do we? Um, yeah, maybe. Maybe. But... I don't know. Maybe it's just your demeanor comes off as monotone, but I'm thinking about your setup and punchlines, and they're not monotone No, at all. I try to... I like your peacock joke, yeah. and that's not monotone. I like a musicality in jokes. <laughs> But um, for musicality, I think Louis C.K. is the best. But uh, for joke structure, I like Gary Goldman. I think he's probably the best joke writer of all time. Certainly the best long-form joke writer of all time. Yeah. For short jokes, probably Emo Phillips. Emo Phillips. You like Emo Phillips? Yeah. I never could get into his stuff. Really? He, yeah. He, it's he, an interesting... Yeah. I've watched it, but like... it. I mean... Mm-hmm. Maybe they're... I don't know. People say there's comedy that's too smart for some people, and maybe that's what he is. But it um, just, I don't get it. Yeah. He uh, works with Parapresdokians, which are um, stories that change retrospectively based on the last part of the story. Okay. So like, uh, my parents threw a very good going away party for me, from what I could tell from the letter. <laughs> so that there is a letter involved means that he wasn't present, so that changes the rest of the story. That's a Parapresdokian. But uh, I just like how he works with structure. Yeah. Most of the time. But um, yeah, he's very good. I don't even understand the j- structure of my jokes mm-hmm. on stage. I mean, joke structure is really simple. Yeah. It's just like a setup, a punchline, sometimes a red herring misdirection. Yeah, I feel like that's most of it. You're just trying to catch them off guard. If yeah. they can see it coming, then it's not going to work. Yeah. And that's like when you're at an open mic and you see a bunch of people bombing, it's because. The things they're saying aren't one. They're just not that funny. Or two, they're very predictable. Mm. Yeah, and uh, the way to get to something unpredictable is just intuition. I don't think you can um, do arithmetic to get you there. Yeah. But... No, there's a there's a comic who asked me advice about it, and mm-hmm. who doesn't i'll just say was it yeah okay and uh i'm like i don't know if i can help you i don't know if (laughs) oh i love 
He uh, he's a great man, number one legend. He watched my uh, set. You you were on that show, the stand up on the spot show at yeah. Pop Broadway. Yeah, and I posted my whole set from it. And to me, it shades last week, and he was like, "How did you do it?" He was like, "What was the what was the thought process behind it? How did you just say those things on mm-hmm. the spot?" And I was like, "I don't know. I just <laughs> yeah." Um, I just... Was that shades? Uh huh. Shades is tonight. Yeah. And we were gonna go. Maybe we shouldn't. <laughs> just <laughs> goes there. Just kidding. and I love. Mm-hmm. Um. He. Uh, says a thing that's very cute and mormony every mm-hmm. time ah. uh, and it's uh yeah. if anyone asks about shades to him they're like oh are there any friday night mics and he'll be like yeah the shades you should go it's in salt lake but warning it smells really gross <laughs> and i'm like that just smells like fermentation and beer man that's what that smells like <laughs> but he tells everyone and he was at shades last week he's like does it just smell icky in here <laughs> Uh, he's a goof yeah well, yeah um maria bamford is another i don't comedian. know who that is she's very good um she's a sort of alt comic okay sort of um but she does a lot of voices she does a lot of characters she's very uh she's like robin williams but better structured okay uh I've only seen like a few clips of Robin Williams. I heard he was a big joke thief. Um, so he would hang out with people. He would hang out with comics, and then he would like record jokes they would say, and then he would just be improvising on stage and just blurt them out sometimes. Oh, really? So he started paying comics um, who said that the, he stole jokes from them, and whenever somebody said that, even if he couldn't verify it, he would just pay him. He would just pay him right away because he didn't want to be known as somebody who stole jokes. Yeah, and, uh, he said that's so a I... bad rap. <laughs> yeah, so he's like, I, I can't hang anymore. I can't hang after shows. Yeah, so, that is like, uh, I mean, that reputation single handedly killed Carlos Mencia's career. Yeah, that dude was like selling out arenas, and now he can. I he did. Uh, so the comedy club where I started is called the Spokane Comedy Club in mm-hmm. Spokane, and it's a creative name, and. Uh, he they he was headlining there and the, I saw the post on Facebook that he was headlining it. There was like a hundred comments of random people who don't even do comedy or know mm. anything about comedy, but people from Spokane who said, "Oh, is he going to do his own jokes?" Like that's how widespread that is. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> like, oh boy, that guy can't go anywhere without. If a club posts that he's going to be headlining there, all the mm-hmm. comments are that everywhere he goes. Yeah. I feel kind of bad for the dude because there's, like, no redemption at all. Mm-hmm. But he also, like, he never admitted to stealing jokes, and I think that's what hurt him. Yeah. Yeah. Because To this day, he'll, like, still, he still maintains his innocence. But then there's, like, clips of him doing, like, carbon copies of Bill Cosby's jokes. And yeah. It's a bad look. In the, of all the people to steal from, I guess Bill Cosby was one person you can. No. That's something Alex, <laughs> that's something Alex Valuto said on stage a long time ago. Really? <laughs> so he like stole a portion of Bill Cosby's jokes and then uh, joke, and then he uh, he he um, uh, did a variation on it that was really brilliant. And he said the beginning of that joke was Bill Cosby's, but if I'm going to steal from any comedian, I feel like I can steal. <laughs> I thought it was really funny. That's really funny. That was like five years ago or something. Yeah. Now Bill Cosby's a free man. Is he? Yeah. Oh. Because he's innocent. (laughs) (laughs) You're fired. (laughs) I don't pay attention. I was bummed when I found out that he was not going to be attending Skankfest. I was way more bummed to find out find out that he was a rapist. (laughs) I was way more bummed to find out that anyone was a rapist. (laughs) I don't know. He was uh the first comic I ever saw perform live. Really? Was it good? Um at the time i think i thought it was good yeah um it was years and years before i did comedy i think i was 19 yeah like I just turned 19 um i didn't do my first open mic till i was 24 yeah. um and he was he did like two hours and didn't have an opener wow yeah yeah that's interesting i know seinfeld thinks he's the best of all time yeah do people like us talking shop? Is that something people like? 
Yeah, no, I just worry I'm boring people. No, no, it's uh, it's interesting. Also, yeah. it gets the juices flowing. Gets oh, the yes. juices flowing. So we'll cut out this part. <laughs> Seinfeld, uh, that's fun. I watched a documentary about him banging teenagers. That was cool. <laughs> <laughs> Seinfeld versus Pharaoh or whatever. Was that it was one? no. It was called the. It was called What's the Deal with Jerry? Seinfeld. Oh my God! No way. <laughs> what's and the he deal never with said Jerry? What's the Deal. He never Did never, he never said never that. say that. No, that's... every impression of him. <laughs> someone says yeah. that yeah was there a comic that ever said what's the deal and... probably after jerry because <laughs> people got that impression from him for some yeah. reason it's mandela effect that's another guy who like because of his greatness because i never liked his stuff like really? coming up yeah i never did but then because like now that i've been doing comedy for almost five years mm-hmm. about six months ago i dove into watching some of this stuff and mm-hmm. um i'm still not a huge fan but it yeah. was uh it, I like him more than I did before than I watched it. I watched it and I was like, okay, I get it. Mm-hmm. Like, I understand it, but it's definitely not like yeah. something. Like, if he was coming to Utah right now and sold out Vivint Arena or something, mm-hmm. I don't think I would be excited to go see Jerry Seinfeld. <laughs> I'd be so excited. I just can't afford tickets. Yeah. That's um, some... <laughs> but uh, I think his jokes are very jewel-like. Yeah. And they all have a sort of... Uh, um worked quality to them they all feel written yeah um which i appreciate in jokes, yeah but... that's the yeah, yeah with your jokes you can definitely tell that there was a lot of thought put into them thank you some of them the ones that i keep yeah <laughs> i don't <laughs> yeah. a lot of my jokes and i think everyone has a different process mm-hmm. um but yeah mine's like i have an idea of a premise but it's not like all the way thought out Mm -hmm. and then i just go to an open mic and i try to write on stage and i like try to rift with it and i just kind of poop out the idea Mm -hmm. out of my mouth and um it doesn't go great um and usually it will take me doing like a same the same premise if i really believe in it i'll have to like bomb with it like six times before i figure out how it's funny yeah it just seems to me that in utah you get so little stage time that you can't afford to write on stage like i feel like i can't afford to if i'm doing five minutes monday three minutes tuesday three minutes wednesday five minutes thursday five minutes friday that's very accurate i need to get better at kind of coming up with final drafts but i have a hard I think I just naturally don't know what's funny. And so I like need the crowd to like kind of test the waters. Yeah. Um, and a part of it's like, oh, the jokes will evolve. Like, have you heard the joke that I've done about like my dog liking domestic violence? Yes. The first draft of it, I the punchline, I was like, so now my dog likes domestic violence. And I was mm-hmm. like, now he gets really excited whenever I beat the shit out of my wife. And that bombed really badly, understandably. What is it, Lassie? <laughs> you want me to throw her down the stairs? What is it? <laughs> Maybe you can talk to the dog like an old TV show. What is That's it? That's a good idea. What is it? Uh, so I changed it to, um, instead of saying, now my dog likes it when I beat the shit out of my wife, I say, now my dog thinks domestic violence is really cool. And so just saying yeah. that gets a laugh. Uh, it changes the dynamic when the crowd thinks I commit domestic violence. Uh, versus saying that my dog just likes it and then i say i never would on purpose but if i ex- ever accidentally knocked my wife down the stairs my dog would be really excited um but like his red that's... penis would come out of it <laughs> like oh yeah you are gross you know what's funny i don't think people yes, can I tell do. looking at us <laughs> you are filthy compared to me on stage i'm, I'm the filthiest <laughs> yeah i have a terrible mind you're very filthy i uh Compared to you, I am very clean. Yep. I'm very clean. Yep. And I'll say some crazy shit, but I am very clean. I would never... You said talk about his red penis come out, and I was like, nope, I would never say that. Yeah. No, it's not... That's, just... that's the difference between you and me, Trent. <laughs> I go there. Okay? Yeah. Uh, well, sweet. Um, let's get fired. Okay. So, the whole premise of this podcast, I ask really fun questions that your HR representative might not like the answers to. Mm-hmm. So, first off, have you ever been fired from a job before? Yes. You have. How many? One. One? Just one? Yeah. Was it a rough breakup or was it smooth? It was Megaplex Theaters. <laughs> it was because I was out of town when they advertised that there was a mandatory meeting, didn't learn about it, didn't go because I didn't know about it, um, even though I was back from vacation. And uh, they said I just had to be there. It was my responsibility to go, and they fired me. 
Jeez. So yeah. no like grace room at all. No. Dude, that's such bullshit. It wasn't it wasn't a great job. In high school. Just yeah, yeah, I was. Yeah. Yeah. Dude. Fuck those guys. I'm only going to Cinemark for now on just because of that. Yeah, I just think their theaters are really clean, so I go anyway. But Yeah. They are very gr- clean. I don't have a grudge or anything. I didn't like working there. Dude, I'll but... have a grudge on your behalf. <laughs> <laughs> Um, one time I met somebody at the theater and I said, I'm glad Larry H. Miller's dead. <laughs> like to one of the concession people and they did not know what to do. <laughs> you should have said stuff like that when you were working there. <laughs> yeah. And then he said, did you used to work here or something? I said, yeah, I was a lackey like you. And I felt really bad about that. I was like, I'm, and then I like waited for him to come around after getting somebody else's popcorn after I got my stuff. And I was like, I'm sorry about that. <laughs> it felt bad, but. Oh, man. Sometimes words just occur to me and I say them and then I have to think about it later. So. so you have been fired. Yes. That's fun. Not for anything I said, though. Yeah. I'm really businesslike at work. I know how to compartmentalize it. Yeah, mm-hmm. I am too. I'm good at Except my last job was very inviting. Uh, that was the dangerous thing. Mm-hmm. Like, it was really open. Like, yeah. what we could say. Like, the things people were saying in team meetings was out there. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Worse than what... Colin or I would say up there (laughs) yeah I could really go for it with jokes Mm -hmm. um and it was almost too like I almost need to be in a place where they're more buttoned up because a place that's like really open like that I'm like destined to cross the line eventually yeah because they keep they kept being like come on come a little closer come a little and eventually I'll just step over it but like when I worked I worked for Comcast for four years doing Mm -hmm. technical support and Comcast was very strict, and it's like, okay, I'm never g- going near the line. I just, I know that to stay a mile away from it. Yeah. But, like, when your boss is saying fucked up shit during your team meetings, it's, like, really fun. I had my favorite coworker. He was Tongan, and he didn't believe in the moon landing, and uh, was a really big Trump supporter, and so he was just really fascinating to me. And so... I would, uh, he would like go on a tangent and my favorite thing would to be encouraging him to go on the tangent. <laughs> and then, uh, my boss, uh, he, his dad worked for Pfizer. And so he was like the, the, they would argue about vaccine stuff. That's <laughs> just leave it at that. And I would, uh, I really liked, uh, that was my favorite aspect of that job was just, uh, kind of watching them go yeah. at it. That sounds like Finn. Yeah. yeah, I never had a fun time at work like that. No? Not even once. Not once, ever? Any job? Never fun? No. <laughs> what jobs have you worked? I was at Starbucks for six years. Um, I did insurance work for four or five years. Um, that's what I just stopped doing. Right now, I'm not employed, but I'm Ooh. starting a new job on May 1st, and I'm not going to say what it is. <laughs> that's a smart move. Yeah. Um, oh, you did insurance work? Yeah. Was that fun? No. Was Starbucks fun? It paid well. Starbucks was fun. I really miss Christmas time at yeah. Starbucks. I don't like Christmas. I don't I'm not a big fan of Christ. Uh-huh. Or God in general or God's any what of a, that. But what about Allah? I love Allah, dude. Allah's great. <laughs> <laughs> I have nothing bad to say about him. Great That's guy. Good. Very polite. <laughs> it's gonna be a great clip for the podcast. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, no, I love a lot. Great fella. Please do not bomb my house. <laughs> if anybody is listening, um, I would never draw a depiction of Muhammad. I might, <laughs> but I would just keep it under my in my drawer or something, and I'd open it up just when I need. You just to be like aff- put it in a safe. <laughs> yeah, I'd open it up when I need to be offended. I just go like unlock it. I'd have keys with a lot of keys, you know, like, and then I open it up and be like, and then shut it again. That's funny. So were you there when they like changed the coffee cups to plain red from like yeah. Christmas trees, and people were like, ah, yeah. But um, Christmas time was just really fun at Starbucks. You got tons of tips. People were so happy. People dressed right. up. It was fun. Ah, it's not yeah. all bad. Was... My, wor- my wife worked at Starbucks. She uh, liked it. That was my favorite job I ever had. Yeah. Yeah. Was that here in Utah? Yeah. Uh, Draper Starbucks. Sending Mormons to hell every day. <laughs> <laughs> yep, Draper Starbucks. Sometimes when people were obviously Mormon, I liked telling them that our hot chocolate was caffeinated because it was. 
<laughs> I really enjoyed that. I can't believe I like, well, that. If, you, if you're trying to follow the word of wisdom, I don't know if you should get our hot chocolate just to tell you. It's caffeinated, I'm sorry to say. So it does count as a hot drink. <laughs> <laughs> that is funny. Yeah. Because, like, I don't know. So, like, I grew up Mormon outside of Utah. Mm-hmm. And so people at school would be like, Mormons aren't allowed to drink caffeine. I'd be like, what? Because, mm-hmm. like, all the Mormons drink caffeine outside of yeah. Utah. And then I didn't... I said that's a made up thing. Mm-hmm. And then I moved here and I found out there's actual Mormons who believe that you can't drink caffeine. Yeah. I mean, the word of wisdom just says hot drinks. Yeah, I if, don't boil anything. Yeah. I, so people people just take that to mean like tea with caffeine, coffee with caffeine. Yeah. And such. But, yeah. yeah, that's. Uh, so I enjoyed messing with their food a little <laughs> bit, just a little bit. I will have. I do have a bone to pick with the hot cocoa at Starbucks, though, because they only offer dark chocolate. And yeah, but you can make it white chocolate. You can make it uh, milk chocolate. You really? Just add like half a pump of white chocolate in it. Really, and that yeah. balances out the bitterness. Yeah, it tastes just like milk chocolate. And I'm a yeah. I'm still a child at heart. I can't do dark chocolate. It's the yeah. icky and bitter. I love dark chocolate. Really. I love I fragrant can... soaps. I was complimenting <laughs> your soap earlier. You were. That lavender mint soap. It's so, it smells so good. I love fragrant soaps. We have so much. a My... cabinet full of them. Oh, yeah? I would love to smell some. Really. <laughs> as long as we can, like, throw your dog out the window first. But <laughs> like, You did not like my dog at I just, all. I just, the he autism was... makes me stressed when yeah. there are loud things. Dude, loud. I am so sick of people... This is I, this is like real uh, ADD, like switching back and forth. Yeah. But dude, I am so sick of people saying they have autism when they don't. Because then when I'm around you and I see my dog barking, I'm like, oh no, Max actually does. Yeah. But like, there's so many comics I see who go on stage who are just a little bit awkward, and they're like, I have autism. I know you don't. Yeah. Like, knock it off. I don't know. <sighs> it's sad, but uh, no, that lavender mint soap was delicious. I love fragrant soaps. Just to get back on topic, <laughs> the topic of the podcast. That's My so girlfriend funny. bought went to uh, Washington, and she came back and she brought me all these soaps. Really? Yeah. So I have like a brown paper bag with all these fragrant soaps inside, and I just love them. Ooh. Yeah, dude. A little about me. <laughs> <laughs> this is the soap cast. Yeah, soap. <laughs> the soap opera. <laughs> I love soaps. <laughs> Stupid. No, dude, uh, I do like the new joke you're doing about how autistic people can't sniff out other autistic people because that one's one's bombing. It is bombing, but I like it. Mm -hmm. So we should go as a team, like uh, uh, like the mystery gang from Scooby Doo, and we'll just I'll unmask all the fake autistic people, (laughs) and then you should be like, "How dare you?" (laughs) You're just dressed as a cardinal or something. And then I have that big crook, and I'm like, "Oh, die you!" There's lightning behind me. Yeah, we should. That sounds like fun. That'd be fun. That's a fun sketch idea. Yeah, unmasking fake autistic people. I just really like the idea that um, if any of those autistic people are faking it, they're being really offensive. <laughs> That's what I'm trying to say. Yeah, there. that's what the punchline. And I could have gone away with it if it weren't. <laughs> and, and if it weren't for you, neurotypicals. <laughs> And I could have got away with it too if it weren't for you neurotypicals. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Silly. That'd be fun. So, what's the worst job you've ever worked? Teleperformance. Teleperformance. What is, is teleperformance? Is that call just center, call center? And I worked for USAA. And uh, it was just. USAA is probably really good to their employees, but teleperformance is not good to their employees. Oh, so you were like third party contracted yeah. by USAA? Yeah. And it was just. It was just hard. Yeah. Dude, third parties always are bad to their employees. Yeah. They're never... They were, but um, I found a way to have fun there. So what uh, we were only allowed on certain websites, and I found out that one of the websites we could get on... Well, we could get on a lot of government websites. So I went to the Library of Congress website, and uh, I found that they had, like, transcripts of books. Uh So I just copied and pasted Moby Dick and Pride and Prejudice and uh, Persuasion, and a couple Mark Twain books to my notes, chapter by chapter. I just copied and pasted them. Uh And then when they found out that we could get on those websites, they, of course, took them away because they didn't want us to have fun. But I already had all those notes, so I just emailed these entire novels to friends of mine. (laughs) And then I would just read them between calls. And sometimes we had, like, ten minutes between calls. That was pretty cool. But we weren't allowed to do anything except I had those books. 
So um, I knew how so, to hide the little sticky notes. Dude, so if you had downtime between calls, you couldn't just like mm -hmm. hang out. Yeah, you could hang out. You could talk to people around you. But okay. um, I was sick of the people around me at that point. Dude. So I was just reading Moby Dick and I got a, I was really familiar with it by the time I stopped working there. That is the worst when you go to a job and you have one mm -hmm. and you're like, everyone who works here but me is an idiot and I don't want to talk to them. Yeah, I've never thought that. <laughs> oh, okay. I, I've I, never, I, never I, thought that. I've thought like, God, that person's competent. I wish I could do as well as that person is doing. I would love to be as competent as you, for instance, <laughs> thinking you're the only competent person. But no, there was there were always like seven or eight people who were working harder than me. I mean, well, I, I mean, I'm really lazy. Competency it, doesn't determine if I want to talk to someone or not, or if I think true. they're intelligent. Um, it's a sort of intelligence, I would say. But um, I, uh, I don't know. I'm really lazy unless it comes to writing. Yeah. Yeah. Like I, I write. It, writing comes easily to me. Do you write things that aren't comedy? Yeah. Yeah. Like. Mm -hmm. Have you ever written, like, stories and stuff? Or yeah, like, like, stories, essays, plays, poetry. Okay. A lot of shit. I could read you a poem. Okay. I liked uh, when you went to the mic at Athena's and you shit on poetry. No, you shit on music. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So um, this was a poem I wrote to parody Shakespearean sonnets. And uh, with Shakespearean sonnets, part of the deal is he was trying to... He was making fun of the the uh, sonnet form uh -huh. um, just by like making it insulting so a lot of his sonnets are just like long roasts of women uh -huh. and they're not that gallant he's not that chivalrous about it and I don't think he ever wanted them published uh, some people think that um, uh, so he gave them to the Earl of Southampton he, direct, uh -huh. he uh, wrote them all for the Earl of Southampton and then when he died they went to his mother and then his mother released them so um, Shakespeare wasn't didn't think they would ever be published apparently, but um, there's a German uh, World War II Nazi war propagandist named Lenny Riefenstahl, uh -huh. and she was not a good lady, but she happened to be super hot. <laughs> so this is a poem I wrote to Lenny Riefenstahl <laughs> <laughs> about how much I loved her. Um, it's kind of weird. So. Riefenstahl, we are not of a mind. I'd not film films of Nazi idols, but tossed hair, bewig the camera she's behind. Her left sleek eye, the sleeker, being shut, peers inward at the same red, darkened place, wherein my heart is hers, though she be fair for Reichstag kinder, giving endless chase through politics and years. From here to there, from mine to yours, are distances unlinked by any effort, though love could transpire, to rose fold times and hates. There we lay, brinked, interlocking fingers through the briar. My chest, as sheer as eyelid skin, shows light to find and glow in red your staring sight. That was the whole thing. But, like, I write that shit. Would you say that she's your favorite Nazi propagandist? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, have you seen Gerbil? No. <laughs> He's not a looker. <laughs> and then I've written a lot of limericks. I could read you one. Um, I'm going to find one. So, <laughs> oh, my God. Um... Let's see. Uh, there once was a chap who got pissed, meaning drunk, and petitioned a cat for a tryst. What made it the best gad that he'd ever had was he came as a claw scratched his cyst. That's one. But yeah, I have like 40 limericks I wrote. That was a talent. I think, uh, I think that's probably one reason you have kind of excelled at comedy. Thank you, man. Uh, is because, I don't know if you've noticed, but comics are really bad at sitting down and writing. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they are. Um, that's one We're thing. We're really bad. Yeah, that's like the only thing I can do. That's a great thing yeah. to have. <laughs> that is the great... Is sit down and write shit. That's the you're only way... You're also good. You're also quick on your feet. Thank you, man. I uh, remember one time we were at City Limits and someone... You were going back and forth and uh, you made a joke about having autism and... They said something back, and then you said, you've made a high-functioning enemy tonight. <laughs> so I had used that before. Oh. So the first time I said it, it was on the spot, and it was really <laughs> cool, but I've used it a lot. <laughs> <laughs> that particular time was one of those times when I used it after I came out with it. But... Well, I'm a idiot, and I listened to... A... <laughs> I'll tell you how much of an idiot I am. I listened to an audio book about mastering stand-up comedy. Mm -hmm. But that was one thing they said is to figure out what crowd work or quick-on-your-feet jokes work. Yeah. And then if the instance ever comes up, you have it just 
yeah. locked and loaded, ready to go. Yeah, I totally. And do then that. you look like a genius because people think you came up with it on the yeah. spot, like I did. And I was like, oh shit! Yeah. And I was like, that was great. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, that that was a fun day. Um, so the first time I've come up with it was at the uh, uh, stand up for improv or whatever show at okay. Waikiki. Um, and then there is this guy who was one of the comedians, and he just never really liked me. I only met him a few times, but he's been pretty rude to me each What's time. What's his name? I don't want to say. Um, but, like, he and I were going back and forth. Uh-huh. I was, like, doing crowd work, crowd work with this improv comic, who uh-huh. I think dabbled in stand-up at one point. Um, and he was just kind of rude. And so I was just coming down Dude, on him in a silly the worst. way. Yeah. I, I like it. I don't know. Um uh, if you go to Chicago, you go to the I.O. and you uh-huh. see Improvised Shakespeare, you will change your mind about improv. That's the most fun I ever had. Really? Yeah. I never liked comedy more than that day. Wow. I, uh, <laughs> yeah, I just, I have never liked improv and I have a lot of resentment towards the place I live, which mm-hmm. is Utah County. Yeah. And Utah County might be the one place on earth where improv comedy is more popular than stand up comedy. Yeah. And so when you're pursuing stand-up comedy and you live in the one place where people prefer improv... Where I'm... is that? What do you mean? Oh, here. Here? Yeah. Really? I'd say people prefer improv here a lot more. People prefer improv in Chicago, too. You think so? Yeah. I know improv... Like, all the big comedy know... clubs there are improv clubs. Yeah, I know it's uh, a hub, like Second City and mm-hmm. stuff like that. I didn't know it was uh, more popular than stand-up. Maybe you're right. I could be wrong. But um, yeah. I know if you want to be a great improv comedian chicago is the place to go yeah that's that's what i was basing that on you could be totally correct but yeah utah is not the place to go but i think people especially in utah county like mormon families they really like silly jokes yeah and they like goofiness and silliness Mm -hmm. and uh clean improv shows are full of goofiness and silliness yeah and i prefer clean improv yeah i like dirty stand-up and clean improv that makes sense. Yeah, because I think improv comedy inhabits this childlike space where sex isn't allowed. I think uh-huh. sex just like gets too crazy too fast in improv. Um, I've never, I think se- it, I've I, never seen a dirty improv show. It gets pretty stupid pretty fast when whenever somebody mentions sex, it gets like uncomfortable so oh. quickly, and people like acting it out and shit. It's just not good. Um, the best improv I ever saw was just like innocence at play, and. Uh, I think um, stand-up comedy is for pushing boundaries in language. Yeah. Huh? I, that's... Uh, I think they just serve different That is purposes. the whole thing. You're really good at not crossing over. Um, like, I mean, the line, I said this in my head without saying it out loud, mm-hmm. but, like, comedy is, like, all about pushing the boundary mm-hmm. and, like, seeing how far you can go without bursting the bubble. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, you're always going to cross over, though, if you decide to push it. I've crossed over a lot. Yeah. I, I feel yeah. yeah, I feel like I do it. I don't know. I do it to a fault. Mm-hmm. Um, but if I'm on like a show, like a show show, mm-hmm. I'm not usually. Usually it's open mics where mm-hmm. I'm pushing that boundary because I'm just trying to see what I can do with the joke and where it can go. Yeah. But that's why I'm excited about Skankfest is there is a... Uh, yeah. It's uncapped. The You can't really offend anyone. I can use all the jokes I could never use here. <laughs> and I have many jokes I can, I'd really? be too afraid to say on stage. Yeah. Really? Yeah, a lot. Give an example of one. Um, Let's get fired as a safe place for those jokes. Will you cut it off? If you want me to cut it off. Turn it on so they can just hear your reaction, I guess? Yeah. Would you uh, edit this I'll, part out? I will edit this part out. Okay. You'll promise to edit out the joke? Yeah, okay. I will edit out the joke. Okay. And then you just like go, beep. <laughs> when i tell you the joke i'm gonna Uh have like i'm probably just gonna have like a gap Mm -hmm. like it's gonna be like will you edit this out and then it's just gonna cut to me laughing (laughs) okay i'm even gonna do this so they can't see (laughs) they can't read my lips so um people make jokes one that would do well as gang first i think so i'll tell you one more okay okay tell you one more um uh, like we did, really did a number on Vietnamese people. <laughs> oh man! You have to cut out both. <laughs> I will Please. edit both of those out. Please edit both. <laughs> but, but yeah, the yeah. second one's worse, I think. But. No, that's where I've gotten to the point where people will make. I don't know. People make jokes here in Utah about. I haven't done like race jokes, but people make jokes about mm-hmm. me being racist. Really? And I roll with the punches. 
Yeah. Like, I had Clinton Quran here, mm-hmm. and he was like, Quran was talking about how he's dirty and ashy. <laughs> he was like, look, I'm dirty all ashy. and ashy. And uh, Clint's like, I'm ashy too, look. And he, like, scratched him, and he's like, look, that's ash. And he's like, yeah, but I'm brown, so it shows up. And he's like, yeah, I'm dirty and ashy, and... And Clint's like, well, Drew already thought that. And, like, I will just I, – I roll with the punches and laugh yeah. along. But I'm like, I don't touch race jokes, but for some reason I do give off a persona of someone. I don't think you do. Uh, that's really surprising to me. I never heard that. Either. Yeah. That's um, uh, every – to him and try to be as – I don't know. I don't ever want to have contention. Contention yeah. makes me very uncomfortable. Me and we're all doing this, like, weird thing of going up on stage and trying to make strangers laugh. Mm-hmm. Uh, which I can include what I'm saying right here in. So, um, mm-hmm. yeah. but I, yeah, that's why I definitely want to like, I want to be friends with everyone. Yeah. And so it definitely, it hurts my feelings when I get the feeling that someone doesn't like me, mm-hmm. uh, which th- I think everyone who goes through comedy goes through that. Yeah. Um, of w- course. When I started, it was pretty bad in Spokane. Like uh, the comics who'd been doing it for years, like really did look down on the newer comedians. And so it was hard to kind of, I think the scene right now up in Spokane is a lot more like open and accepting of newer comedians. Uh, but when I started, it did not feel really warm yeah. and welcoming. Is this still being cut out? No, oh, no, okay. no. Um, yeah, I try to, I try to be nice to new people. I've made a point of that recently. Yeah. Well, um, the thing is new people are terrified like going on stage for the first time is a terrifying experience for some people, Mm -hmm. especially if you haven't had like a lot of experiences in your life where you got to do like public speaking or things like that. Yeah. And I've seen it. I'm not going to like name names here because this is included in the episode, but like I have seen like new guys like tremble at wise guys and then the MC makes fun of them. And I'm like, oh, yeah, dude, that makes like, me sad. you've been doing stand up for six years and you're going to make fun of this guy? Like, yeah, I remember how that was, too. I don't know. I would know. get like white hot fear in my stomach. Yeah. Before I went up every time. So there was a there's a new guy who came around to one of the mics recently and uh, I just said, like, are you doing OK? Because he was like shaking. Yeah. And uh, he was like, yeah, I'm doing fine. I just have a lot of energy. I was like, OK, cool. <laughs> <laughs> like he was totally confident. He was just, two minutes later. That guy shoots everyone in the club. <laughs> Yeah. No, he was just, uh, he, he was just like pumped. Yeah. He wasn't nervous at all. Okay. Which I thought was really cool. He was pumped to kill yeah. everyone. That was, uh, <laughs> that was David Hone. That's his name. <laughs> right, well, he's a great young man. I, uh, and, uh, whenever he's on stage, he uses a lot of props. Yeah. And whenever people have props, I tend to tune out <laughs> and I feel bad. <laughs> no, I also do that. That doesn't mean they're not bad. I mean, I guess... Carrot Top was a big deal for years. And he was funny. He's got some funny jokes. So does Gallagher. Yeah. Like when he had that tiny table he put on somebody's head for the person behind them. I haven't seen that. That's really funny. I thought that was goofy. It was cheeky. But uh, I uh, I have one prop joke really? that I've always thought of doing and have never done. What is it? I can't say it. You can't say it? It'll be a surprise. No. Okay. I'm excited. But it uses three, it three like antique props I just happen to have around my house. Three like antique things. <laughs> And I would have to have all three of them on my person, and a couple of them are really big. So. And it would be one joke involving all three things. So I'm pretty excited to try it, but I've never really done a prop joke. So. Yeah, I don't think I could ever pull one off. Yeah. I, I mean, I could. I'm selling myself short. But I don't like, I don't like props. I'm a weird thing because it's like I do get like this like aggressive energy towards improv comedy and yeah. pop comedy comedy i'm like, like yeah, they're that, not real comedy that makes me sad i mean there's such something to learn from each of those yeah you know? um no i a lot of comedians feel like that a lot of stand-ups they I'm, have a i'm pure, very yeah. aware of how not open-minded i am yeah. with that and some comedians think you just should never do comedy in shorts yeah. And then uh big G, big j just did a whole special in shorts yeah did you watch it's it fine yeah it's yeah. a good special it's fine it's a good stand-up special i uh yeah, I did stand up in shorts all the time when I started. Yeah. And uh, I opened for this dude. He has a dry bar special now, um, Phil Kopsinski. He's a Spokane okay. comedian. Um, but I opened for him and he said, no shorts ever again. 
and I've never worn shorts on stage ever again. Yeah, like, when we go to Shades, I'm going to change out of these shorts <laughs> into some jeans. Yeah, people get mad. Yeah. Well, I, a couple comedians in particular I get really mad. personally think it's stupid. Yeah, it is. But... I don't know if I can mock it since I've abided by that rule ever since I got called out on it. I just don't own a pair of shorts. Yeah. I look stupid in shorts. I can see that. <laughs> I, I have really, that. really thin, hairy legs. Yeah. And I look like an English schoolboy when I, I got on a pair. I got some pretty big legs. I've been, I, especially since I got fat, I've been carrying around a lot of mass, so it's bulked up my legs. Mm-hmm. Uh, I would say since I got fat, because I've only been a fat guy for four years, so I'm mm. still new at being fat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I was really skinny, like, my whole life, and then, like, I put on a little bit of muscle. Like, I played football in high school, and so, mm-hmm. like, I couldn't be, like, all bones. Um, and then I went on a Mormon mission to Guatemala, and I got emaciated and came back weighing 160 pounds. Wow. Um, which for my frame, that's like really skinny. And then I went from being that skinny to get really jacked and I got really like big. And then if you go from like very muscular and you just quit working out like cold turkey and eat a lot of Taco Bell, you just put on fat (laughs) everywhere where you had muscle. (laughs) That's funny. And, uh, yeah, I did that. When me and my wife met, we both stopped working out at the exact same time and then just ate Taco Bell nonstop for f- four years. It was years. very fun, though. It was fun. She was, had a, she was in ROTC at her college and had a scholarship. She was mm-hmm. going to go into the Army. Yeah. And then I was like, I'll feed, I just fed her burritos until she couldn't pass the PT test anymore. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Also, I did not want to be a military uh, dependent. Yeah. Yeah. As a dude. Looking back on it now, though, I'm like being an officer, an officer's husband would be the sweet life. I'd yeah. just be hanging out at home all day. <laughs> <laughs> and she's gone so, and you're just playing Madden. Yeah, I really messed that one up. <laughs> I have regrets. You go back in time and do not feed her one of the burritos. <laughs> and that changes your whole life. I just make her work out. I still get fat, but... <laughs> Yeah, um, yeah, like the James Bond movies. Like James Bond was always a little doughy. <laughs> like Sean Connery always had a little bit of dough, and all the women were perfect. Yeah, <laughs> the men doesn't. The, the men don't have to work out. The women do. I like that's a good standard that we used to have. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no. We yeah. should keep that up. <laughs> that's changed now. People yeah. like dad bods, but not for movies. No, not for movies. No, you know, they and I think women who say they like dad bods are liars. Really. Yeah. It's like people who like women who say they like a sense of humor. <laughs> like women are sexual beings just like us. They like a hot bod. <laughs> they don't care if you're funny. They don't care. <laughs> no. Yeah. No, they don't. Well, because I think I'm funny. Yeah. Um, and uh, my wife doesn't like it. It's she. Yeah. She likes me, but uh, she wishes we could watch uh, Crazy Rich Asians without me asking if everyone's related. <laughs> <laughs> You scoundrel. You rascal. Ah. You motherfucker. <laughs> God damn. So, um... Is that a good movie? It was actually really good. I thought but it would be. I, uh, and like my wife's it. gonna know I actually mean it, because I just said it on the podcast. Mm-hmm. But, uh, I... Yesterday, when we watched it, she kept being like, I know you hate this. Stop making fun of it. And, because the thing is, I kept making jokes while we're watching the yeah, movie, but and- I was actually being entertained... And while I'm entertained by something and I see a joke, like if I see a joke and all I have to do is finish the layup, yeah. I'm going <laughs> to do it. Yeah. Um, and so I, I did. But yeah, there was a, at one point <laughs> I turned to my wife and I was like, the lip dubs in this movie is incredible. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. That's really funny. I'd like to see that. I loved uh, Everything Everywhere All at Once. Yeah. And uh, I, th- I think somebody like one of the actors is in Crazy Rich Asians. Maybe. She I is. No, yeah, she is. Um, Michelle Yeo. Okay. She's in yeah. Crazy Rich Asians, and Mo- I thought she was great. Movies like that are movies I never would have seen if I never met my wife. Yeah. And I that's what I appreciate about being married is it definitely has opened up another perspective. Like, yeah. I grew up liking sports and 
only watching sports. Like when I'm at home, I all I do is just turn on ESPN or watch yeah. sports. Or you're a man's man. No, and I that sounds so gay. <laughs> that sounds so gay saying that, but it does. Uh, you're I, a man I, who belongs to men. <laughs> ooh, ooh. Um, Whatever. <laughs> Yeah, I know. And if you think about it, I did football and then I did wrestling in middle school. I touched a lot of men. <laughs> Have you seen Out of Africa? Out of Africa? Yeah. No. You should show your wife that movie. It's a really romantic movie. Okay. It's like, from a woman's point of view, it's the it's a biopic about one of my favorite authors, Karen Blixen. I'm t- making a note right now. Yeah, it won like Best Picture, Best Director, a whole bunch of shit. It's got Robert Redford, whom I don't love, but he's okay in it. And it's got Meryl Streep. Okay. But it's a great movie. Um, I like, I don't know, like whenever I watch Lawrence of Arabia, because uh-huh. there are no women in speaking roles in that movie, it's like four hours long and there's not one woman in a speaking role. I always turn on Out of Africa. <laughs> it feels like the antidote to that movie, even though both are racist. <laughs> Out of Africa has like a subtle racism to it, which you just have oh. to go, ah, all right. Dude, that sounds like great jokes now when I watch it. <laughs> so. Yeah. So it's, um, your wife will like it. You can make racist jokes. That sounds like good a for good both date night. Yeah. Um. <laughs> yeah. But no, it's a, it's just a very romantic film. Yeah. And it makes me feel feelings whenever I watch it. I'm like, go with him. Like that yeah. kind of thing. Yeah, that's yeah. the thing. It's like, I got to like, I don't know. You know, a movie did almost make me cry a few months ago. Uh, the first time ever mm. in my life. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we saw Marley and me. Okay. And uh, <laughs> we were holding our dog while watching it. And I just looked at him and I like almost had a tear. But I was like, do not. And like a tear almost came out. But I just sucked it back up. Yeah. <laughs> That's a cartoon trick. I think they do it in like, uh, I forget the cartoon. But like a character will be like, <laughs> no, it's from Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs, I think. Oh. Like his dad, the mustache guy. I love that movie. Okay, I've never seen it. You, I, you should watch Out of Africa. You should watch Cloud with the Chance of Meatballs 1 and 2. <laughs> You're not doing your civic duty. Have you seen Lawrence of Arabia? No. What the fuck? <laughs> I you need to watch that no. also. I that, don't know what these are. Lawrence of Arabia might be the best movie ever made. It okay. might be. That's the one that made Spielberg start making movies. Um, it's a very long movie, but it's really entertaining. It doesn't feel long. You said no women speak in it. <laughs> yeah, so oh, that's one. Great. That's, <laughs> that's one benefit. You sold me. <laughs> <laughs> like, they don't like. They don't let bitches speak. <laughs> yeah. I think David Lean's greatest technical achievement as a director was not letting women speak at all <laughs> during a four-hour epic. And that's like, <laughs> that's what I think. No, but it's a, it's a great movie. It's just that um, women didn't have a prominent place in that story, and it's based on a true story. Yeah. So it's unfortunate. And they have Alec Guinness, who's a very white man, as an Arab in that movie. So it's hard That's... to recommend to some people now. But... <laughs> Which I'm like, I'm sure there were some great actors from. Yeah, you know, I think you can always recommend those kind of movies to a comic, though. Yeah. I mean, comics still... They get it, but it's comics just a different still time. still appreciate how funny blackface is from... <laughs> yeah, my, um, it's, it's just, it was, a, it was, you know, it was a different time. Yeah, that was you a just different realize, time. You just got to sure. realize, you just got to realize... <laughs> Just got to realize that the nowadays we wouldn't do that and no. everything. Yeah. Except Jimmy Kimmel just 15 years ago and like on the yeah, man yeah. show. <laughs> yeah. Oh, um, man. Yeah. I do like, since now that I'm with my wife, I uh, like I've watched a handful of musicals. I took her to see Les Mis for her birthday. Mm-hmm. Things I never would have done in my life if yeah. I had never met her. And Were you moved? It was all right. <laughs> I was actually really upset because our car got totaled on the way there. Wow. Um, an uninsured driver ran a red light and took off half of our car. <laughs> wow. Um, and so it just totaled our car. And the cops gave us a ride to the opera house. And that was nice, even though I don't like the police make me scared. And yeah, they, they threw me in the back and... <laughs> And uh, like, drove us to the see opera a house. Musical. Yeah, <laughs> you're gonna see a musical. Um, and so the whole time we're watching it, I'm just thinking about half of my car that's just sitting on the side of the road mm-hmm. that we just left for me to go pick up after yeah. and get it towed after the musical. Um, so I didn't. I had a hard time enjoying it. But before my wife, music was just background noise to me, like all music. Yeah. Like 
if I li- I didn't listen to lyrics mm-hmm. and subject, it just sounds cool. Like that's yeah. why I'd play something. Do you like classical at all? Uh, I don't ha- usually listen to classical. You don't but... usually. I'll send you some things. Okay, I will listen to it. I'm a lot more open minded than I yeah. used to be. I love opera. And yeah. I love ballet. I will go and see a ballet. I really? love Nutcracker. Really? I love it. I only saw it once, but I think about it every day. Dude, all right, I can't hear this episode. My wife will be like, there's other men who do that. <laughs> now, I'll break She's up like, my girlfriend I... <laughs> and divorce your wife. We'll do this. Let's do this. Um, my, yeah, my girlfriend just likes beer and shit. <laughs> Your girlfriend's just a bro. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. She's, she's like, shut up, Max. We're going to watch like, the game. <laughs> she's, like, she's way cool. <laughs> she doesn't care about romance and movies or nothing. She's like, she likes sports. <laughs> and <it was> like, <laughs> I don't think she likes sports. She plays kickball. Really? Yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah, and she just drinks a lot of beer. <laughs> But uh, and then she like got so excited about shades tonight. She's like, I already have my beer picked out. I'm like, oh god. <laughs> Do you drink beer? No. no. Do you drink at all? No. Is it because of your? I don't know if you want to talk about it. Well, I'm bipolar. Yeah. Oh, okay. And it'll. It, yeah, it's not good for me. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I've never had alcohol. It's fun. Yeah. It's nice. But, uh, yeah. It sounds nice. Well, I, I blacked out one time. Yeah. And then I never when, drank again. When my anymore. wife and I first started dating, she would go pretty wild. And uh, I would, like, uh, just hang out with her sober with all of her friends, and they're all drunk, and that's not fun. You yeah. don't want to, because you're on a different vibe as everyone else in the room when you're sober. And then, uh, yeah, then just, like, holding her hair while she's throwing up the next day, that's not fun. Yeah. And then... But you get to smell her hair. Because she uses good <laughs> perfume. You get to be all creepy about it. You're like, yes, keep puking, yes. <sighs> no? Is that not how no. it <laughs> Sorry. Um, so, what's the worst thing you've ever done while on the clock at a job? Hmm. Again, I'm pretty business-like. This might not be a fun part of the podcast this, because I'm really good at working and keeping. You're really good at keeping a job. us out of work, yeah. Um, when I was at Megaplex, I did whack off in the bathroom. That is like the number one twice. response yeah. on this podcast. That yeah. is the number one response. Yeah, I wouldn't do that nowadays, but yeah, yeah. I was a crazy kid. <laughs> Have you, so it was just never, it was just in high school. You've learning. never stolen company property. No. 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 Not even a staple. No. Okay. No, I'm a virtuous young boy. Very virtuous. Yeah. <laughs> All without. Help. I said I said my boss was a bitch once <laughs> to people in the break room, and then they told on me, and then they couldn't verify the story because I just denied it, and then I never got in trouble. That was at Megaplex too. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that was bad, I guess. But here's a fun question that I know that you would like. Mm-hmm. If you had a time machine, this is a premise of your bit, but mm-hmm. would you kill baby Hitler? I'd probably steal him and raise him right. Raise him right. Where would you take him to raise him? Uh, probably my parents' house. <laughs> I'd move back in with my parents right when I get back to the present. Like, this is Hitler. <laughs> Mom and dad, this is Hitler. And the baby's like, hi. <laughs> 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 oh, he wants a cracker, I think. <laughs> and then you could try to give him a cracker and he doesn't take it. You're like, uh oh. <laughs> no, I would just try to raise him, right? I'd put on like Mozart and Prokofi and all these classical music um, composers. And then uh, just teach him how to I'd paint. rock him to sleep. And then I'd do the cry it out thing just enough. And then um, I would, you know, hire someone to breastfeed him for long enough and stuff. <laughs> Actually, they've found that babies that breastfeed feed longer are more effective as adults. Really? Isn't that weird? I think I heard about that. You yeah, know. I've heard that. It's odd. I was mm-hmm. breastfed, so. Me too. Yeah. That's why we're doing so well. Yeah. I miss it. <laughs> <laughs> Those are the days. Ah, quarantine. <laughs> oh. Uh, so, you would raise him right. You, you wouldn't. Would. Yeah. I would go back in time and steal him and then raise him right. If he was really cute. I'd probably get there with a gun and be like, I can't. 
<laughs> and then I'd take him, and then he'd be all chubby. He'd have these chubby little cheeks, and just the little the fuzz of a mustache, <laughs> just, just like appearing on fuzz. his yeah, just appearing on his lip. And then... I would, if I had baby Hitler, I would sharpie the mustache on him, <laughs> just so everybody knows <laughs> this is baby Hitler. <laughs> yeah, and then try to like show him a lot of Jewish culture. I'd show him. <laughs> Schindler's List. <laughs> Show him. Well, that wouldn't exist anymore. No, that wouldn't exist. Yeah, but there would be a lot more Jewish literature Spielberg because there would be. He would. I don't know. There would be so much more Jewish culture out there. Yeah. There would be so many more great Jewish novels because there would be a lot more Jews. They wouldn't have died. That would be an amazing world to live in. So I could use all that. And then show him all this Jewish culture, and he'd be fine. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I think you can educate kids Dude. out of that shit, or not. What if the Jews were it? trying to secretly kill us all, and we go to the future, and you're like, Hitler was right. Oh my <laughs> god. Oh my god. <laughs> then I don't know, Drew. <laughs> I don't know what to say, Drew. Then that happened, I guess. <laughs> Just every country is just a different version of J.P. Morgan. <laughs> J.P. Morgan Chase. It's, <laughs> is that even a company run by? J. I don't know. That's. I don't think it is. No, Morgan's not a not. Jewish They're name. Not. Not. Neither is Chase. But uh, I don't know. I'm grasping at straws here to mm-hmm. make the joke work. <laughs> yeah, the Rothschild conglomerate or whatever anti-Semitic people go on about when they go on about yeah. that kind of thing. Um, no, I have family members who are Jewish. Yeah. My uncle's Jewish. So, uh, I don't know. I, I like reading about different cultures. Yeah. I love different cultures. You know, uh, you know, Clay, uh, Clayton. Yeah. His grandma survived the Holocaust. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. And then this is a real funny story. He did story. nothing. <laughs> he did nothing. He feel like help. a little pussy <laughs> next to her. He, uh, real funny thing. So all of his aunts got match. You know how they tattooed the Jews in the mm-hmm. concert? yes. So Who doesn't? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Um, so all of his aunts got the tattoo that she has. Wow! And they all got it to like show solidarity. And then on her deathbed, she tells all of them, "I fucking hate that you all did that. <laughs> you guys are all so stupid for tattooing." That. Wow, that's yeah. amazing. That is pretty dumb. <laughs> it is pretty dumb. Was she Jewish? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, Clayton's family is Jewish, but okay. uh, on his dad's side. I see. I didn't and know then uh, my, some, they my, married into like some yeah. other fam married into a Catholic family that so his dad's side's like Catholic and then his yeah. mom was raised. You'd never be able to tell else. from his comedy. No. Anyway. <laughs> no, yeah, he is ethnically Jewish, and so growing up, to like get back with his like ancestry, his dad would take them to like synagogue once a year. Okay, even though they were devout, he was like raised in a, like a strict Catholic household, but mm-hmm. like to mm-hmm. touch with their ancestors, they would go to a temple or whatever. I yeah. don't know the words. On Shabbos or Shabbat. <laughs> Shabbat. Shabbat Shalom. So, speaking of that, uh, what's your favorite racial slur? Limey, maybe? What one? Limey. What's that? So, the history of it is... <laughs> I don't know that one. This is going to be a fun history it's against, lesson. It's a, it's a racial slur against English people. Oh. But um, English people used to have limes on board ship to prevent scurvy, and a lot of other navies thought that was kind of pussy, so they'd call them limeys. Ah. Yeah. Never also, um, the British Navy would, the English Navy would like press people into the Navy, which is where they'd get them drunk at a bar. And then they'd press like a dip balloon or whatever, or half rail or whatever into their hand. And that was their pay. And then they'd wake up on a ship with a coin. And because they accepted the coin, it means they were t- uh, officially in the Navy. Oh, that's awesome. And then so <laughs> like Welsh people and Scottish people and Irish people were understandably pissed off that they kept doing this. <laughs> and would call them limeys. <laughs> Like, so the, the, the Navy was uh, how England um, exercised superiority over yeah, other that's, countries. That's, that's how they... England had the greatest... Yeah. As much... History is something I nerd out about. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was the only subject in school I was actually good at. Yeah. Um, yeah, the British Navy was sick. They were really good. They were very good. And that was part of the reason. It was part just of the that reason legal so loophole. many people speak English today. Yeah. 
Yeah. yeah. And it's a good language. It is. It is it's a very a great language. It's very versatile. There are just more words in our language than yes. I think any other. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm fluent in Spanish, mm-hmm. but like I'll read books in English and books in Spanish mm-hmm. and books in Spanish are usually a few pages longer Yeah, because you have to like to say the same thing. You have to use like more words. Yeah. So English is a very versatile language. It is. And you can kind of get to the point a lot quicker. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's so. good for a business, literature, comedy, all the things. It's like the language of comedy now. Yeah. If you do comedy in a different language, you're not on the scene. Yeah. No. You're, you're not, not on the world scene. I do enjoy it. I listen to Spanish comedians sometimes. Mm-hmm. There's a big one. He sells arenas in uh, Mexico, Franco Escamilla. Yeah. He's really good. And he's good at... He, his jokes are so good that you can watch it subtitled and laugh. Wow. Like, because I watched them with my wife who doesn't speak Spanish, and she was laughing, like, the whole time. Wow. So he's a really good joke writer. Oh, okay. And he has a few Netflix specials. What's his name? Uh, Franco Escamilla. Franco Escamilla. Yeah. My name, my name, or <laughs> I'm just talking German now. He got bent for Gabriel Iglesias once in English. Mm-hmm. Very, and he was nervous because he did Canada doesn't speak English. Yeah. But yeah, that would be a crazy thing. I thought about what it would be like to write a set in Spanish mm-hmm. and I don't think I could do it. Yeah. Like I could have a full on conversation, the same conversation I'm having with you right now, but I don't think I can make the jokes work. What's this? Oh, that is uh, Mormon holy oil. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, that is fine. Um, yeah, I know what you mean. English is a good language for joking. Yeah, it is great. Okay, so last question here. If you had to wipe one country off the face of the earth with a nuke, which country would it be? And it can't be one that's been picked before. You don't know which ones have been picked before. We've done 20 episodes. Has anyone so done w- Saudi Arabia? No, no place on Saudi okay. Arabia. I'd probably do that just because the arranged marriages, how they kill all the gay people and... A lot of women get raped there. That's not even the worst thing they're doing. <laughs> yeah. You know there's a active uh, genocide in Yemen right now. Is there? Yeah. I have no idea. The Saudis are There are war. too many genocides to pay attention. <laughs> there are too damn many. Um, this one is, it's the Saudis killing everyone in Yemen, and yeah. the U.S. is funding it. So that's fun. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> wow. U.S. dollars? Yeah. That's why the dollar's tanking. Because <laughs> we keep using it for genocides. Yeah. yeah. Somebody was telling me the other day that because no, but no comedian has been successfully canceled, cancel culture doesn't exist. And I thought that was goofy. I was like, just because there wasn't a successful canceling doesn't mean it doesn't exist. Yeah. I don't know of any successful genocides. No, there's but it's not. still a genocide. Yeah, there's not yeah. been one where <laughs> they just wiped everyone out. That's like, the point of a genocide. <laughs> like Shane Gillis was like an anti-cancellation. Like he got can he did get canceled, mm-hmm. but his career is so successful now that. Yeah. You're almost like, did he? What can you do? Yeah. yeah. And uh, I, I think it was obvious he wasn't trying to be hateful. No. It's been... I also... That guy is really fun because, like, he, you know, he's really big now. Mm-hmm. I like... he the, His podcast that got him in trouble, he started when he was an open micer in Philadelphia. Yeah. So I, I've gone back and I've listened to all of the old episodes when he was an open micer because they're way more relatable than to listening yeah. to a dude who sells out theaters i can't relate to who he is right now yeah but i can listen to him from five years ago and mm-hmm. it's pretty damn relatable actually yeah. it's a fun podcast i don't know why i'm going on a tangent about it but he's, i highly recommend it yeah he's very funny yeah he's like the he's like a drinking buddy <laughs> yeah i at skank fest i got really nervous and went every time he entered the room because okay. i he's my favorite comedian in the world right now oh, really yeah i'd say right now did you see him at wise guys Yes, that, I did. Yeah, that, yeah. He's also like a history nerd, and he does like a bit about George Washington mm-hmm. and about how his teeth weren't made out of wood; they were yeah. actually made out of slaves' teeth. And like, he's like, he really goes into the history of it, and it's so funny. Mm-hmm. And like, he's don't a, don't burn his bit. <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah. Well, this this, this this podcast, the most downloads I've ever had is five hundred. So yeah, on yeah. an episode, so this isn't gonna. <laughs> yeah, it's just I don't know. But uh, no, I'm not gonna do the bit. But he. Uh, it's a dude where I feel like he's very relatable. He's like a drinking buddy. Mm-hmm. And then, like, I do like the insights he has, like, on, like, fucked up history. Mm-hmm. And so it's, I don't know, it's really fun listening to him. So uh, because he's my favorite comedian, 
I got very like shaky every time I was near him at Skate yeah. Fest because I was too scared to say hi. When he, he came to Wise Guys, he hung out afterwards, and that was when my mom was still sick, so I had to wear my mask. Oh no! And did he, he trash you for that? No, but he looked at me weird, so I just didn't talk to him. <laughs> yeah, dude, yeah. that guy from he's from the same town Colin Shoemaker's from. He's yeah. Gonna... <laughs> Yeah, but um, he's no, gonna I, give some weird looks. I didn't want to have to explain like my mom's dying and everything. <laughs> I loved when you trashed someone wearing a mask. <laughs> at, when I did, Venus. yeah, there was someone in the front row sitting by themselves at a table mm-hmm. wearing a mask, <laughs> and you were like, "Why are you wearing a mask?" And they're like, "I am because my mom's dying of cancer. What's your excuse?" <laughs> 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 I forgot about that. And then that. like, what's wrong? Mask got your tongue? <laughs> Did I say that? Yeah. I, <laughs> That's silly. That was really funny. I, really funny. I still quote it. That's how funny. <laughs> Some of the things you say are quotable. That's how funny they are. Oh, thanks, man. I appreciate it. You're too sweet. Um, but yeah, Shane Gillis is the best. I like Kyle Kinane more than anyone right now, I think. Really? Yeah. I watched his recent special, the one that was taped at Wise Guys. Mm -hmm. I didn't really enjoy it. Really? Yeah, it wasn't. I thought it was very good. Yeah, I didn't. I don't know. Hmm. Hmm. It's a different speed. I don't know. My favorite specials that have come out in recent years was, I like Shane Gillis's Live Austin, but Louis C.K.'s Sorry was probably one of my favorites. Really? I yeah. thought that was just trash. Was that the one? Or maybe it was the most recent one. The most recent one I liked. What That's do, Live at the, the Dolby is the most recent one. He did one where he did a joke where he talked about buying a wheelchair. That's Sincerely. Oh, That's Sincerely. That's the one before, sorry. I liked that one. That was a, a good lot. one. I think that has some of his best jokes. His... The wheelchair joke is one of my favorites. He's yeah. like, that's not an impulse purchase. That's such a good... Is that an impulse purchase? Like, I've just been dragging myself <laughs> for 10 years. Yeah. <laughs> Ever since my legs got blown off in the marathon. <laughs> so funny. It's so good. Yeah, that one was great. I think I think that was his last great special. And then Sorry was bad, and I thought the new one was good. Yeah. But not great. But good. Yeah, I did, guess I mix up sorry and sincerely. They it's both start too. with S's. Yeah. And, yeah. Yeah. Do you think he did it? <laughs> <laughs> well, I know he did it. That's why yeah. I love him. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> <Yeah>. Jesus. <laughs> yeah. All right, dude. Well, those are all the questions. Thanks all for right. doing this. For this sure. Was, was that an hour? We did. An hour and 15 minutes. Okay, hell yeah. You're fired.